Travels by Broomstick comes to you from South Wales, the land of the dragon. Oh, and sheep. We got lots of sheep. Welcome to all you good people out there in podcast land. So let's get the broomstick out the garage and off we go. As humans, we are always looking up to the stars, looking for a meaning to life, looking for other life forms, looking for something that's bigger than us. We have questioned the reality of UFOs or UAPs, we have exposed cover-ups by the government, and we know that the truth is most certainly out there. Today's journey is a little bit different, as it takes us to two different locations. We start our adventures at the UFO and Paranormal Conference at West Dusk Lighthouse, St Brides in Newport, South Wales and end up in Denby Castle, situated in the market town of Denbyshire in North Wales, to investigate a mysterious UFO sighting. We were first introduced to the UFO sightings in Denby when we visited the UFO and Paranormal Conference at the West Esk Lighthouse, a beautiful place that is also an Airbnb and a venue for weddings and other events, hosted by the lovely Frank and Danielle Sheahan. Upon arrival, we saw Thunderbird 2 parked and ready for action in the car park. Then we were greeted by a very friendly little alien who took us to see Doctor Who's TARDIS, which was actually the toilet for the event, but don't tell anyone. The alien then showed us to our seats where we saw a Dalek, but don't worry, it was a really friendly Dalek and it didn't want to exterminate us. The UFO and Paranormal Conference is a gathering of like-minded people that has guest speakers that give presentations from a wide range of topics from aliens, meditation, celestial beings, ley lines, Neolithic stone circles and so much more. We saw the wonderful Chris Robbins who gave an incredibly interesting presentation on UFO disclosure as well as the Enigma of the Skies and the Blue Aliens. Chris is an astrologer, writer, coach, and such a lovely person to chat to. He seems like he is deeply connected with the universe and the alien beings from the other universes. We saw Sharon Barber, who gave a presentation on how celestial beings communicate with humanity. Sharon is a spiritual light reader, channeler, a mentor, and a spiritual teacher, as well as an artist, an author, with books such as The Magic of Spirit, Utopia, The Art of Trance, and her celestial guidance cards. We also saw the amazing Maria Wheatley, who did a truly magical presentation on Stonehenge, ley lines, elongated skulls, and the ancient art of dowsing. We also enjoyed Leslie Mitchell Clark, a hypnotherapist specializing in abduction regression, explaining about the different encounters people have had and what she believes they mean. But the person who really stood out to us was Gary Jones, UFO investigator, author of the book The Denby Lights, A Truthful Argument for the Existence of UFOs, co-author of The Pen Turk Incident, The Greatest UFO Cover-Up of Modern Times. We had previously met Gary at the UFO conference a year prior when he was with Kaz Clark, giving their presentation about The Pen Turk Incident, and this time he was kind enough to sign our books, thanking us for our support. Gary's presentation on the Denby Lights captivated us. He explained how he had his first UFO experience when he was just seven years old, and this event sparked his enthusiasm and passion for the subject. Gary felt like being a UFO investigator was his calling, that it had chosen him rather than the other way around. He was dedicated to finding the truth about UFOs. On January the 3rd, 2012, shortly after 3am, Nathan Thomas... Alex Thomas, Linda Pritchard and Kira George all witnessed what they believed to be a UFO. In April 2018, Gary conducted an in-depth investigation, talking to each of the eyewitnesses about their encounter with the strange extraterrestrial lights that they had witnessed from the window of their home in Denby. In his book, Gary goes into great depths to investigate the origins of the lights that the family saw in the sky at night, debunking everything from drones to fireworks, lanterns, and to the illegal hunting at night known as lamping. The family had lived in Denby for the majority of their lives, 
they knew their surroundings very well. So when the then 12-year-old Nathan Thomas looked out of his bedroom window during the Christmas holidays, he was amazed to see what he described as flashing lights in the sky. The lights glimmered. They were unlike anything usually seen on an aircraft or indeed any land vehicle. He watched the lights dance in the sky before making the decision to wake up his brother Alex. Alex Thomas was 14 years old at the time. He had just finished playing on his Xbox and was settling down in bed to go to sleep. But before Alex could even close his eyes, his brother Nathan excitedly informed him that a UFO was hovering outside of his bedroom window. Of course, Alex initially assumed that his little brother was playing a trick on him, but reluctantly got out of bed to go see what Nathan said was a UFO clearly visible in the night sky. Alex looked through the window and was amazed at what he saw, becoming truly transfixed by the rotating light in the sky. Nathan grabbed his new digital camcorder that he'd received as a Christmas present and immediately started to record the incident. The two brothers watched the mysterious lights, totally perplexed. Nathan recorded a total of nine minutes of video footage. They tried to come up with a rational explanation, but outside the weather was awful. Nobody would be out in the storms with high winds and heavy downpours. The whole reason that Nathan had even looked out of the window in the first place was because he heard a loud crash, the crash of a rubbish bin that had been blown over by the wind. Alex decided to wake up his mother, Linda Pritchard, who was sleeping on the settee downstairs. After hearing Alex's frantic tone of voice, Linda initially panicked. But when she had regained her faculties, she immediately went up to the bedroom in order to see what all the commotion was about. Linda looked through the window to see the lights rotating and shimmering in the distance. At first, Linda thought that it might have been lights from the nearby Denby Golf Club, near to Crestmar Woods. But it was three o'clock in the morning and the golf club would have been closed, especially in the weather conditions. Linda stared at the lights. That's a spaceship, she said to Alex. I told you. How weird is it? He replied. Alex was shaken. He was so overwhelmed at what he was seeing. Linda suggested to her sons that Kira, her granddaughter, should see this too and told them to go and ask her if she wanted to come and see what was going on. So Nathan went into her bedroom and knocked gently on the door. Kira had thought that the boys were just talking about video games with all of the chatter about alien spaceships. She initially dismissed his offer to show her the alien craft. She didn't believe him, but eventually she decided to get out of bed and see for herself. As she walked into the room and focused her gaze on the rotating lights, she soon realized that something extraordinary and inexplicable was taking place. It was as if the lights possessed a mesmerizing hypnotic effect. The whole family continued to stare at them. They couldn't take their eyes off what they were seeing. It was just so unbelievable. The light sadly and suddenly came to an abrupt halt, as if somebody had turned off the light switch. Maybe the lights were camouflaged, or maybe the craft possessed an ability to cloak itself, or maybe the UFO had simply zoomed away through the night sky and vanished. This isn't the first time a UFO has been spotted in Denby. A gentleman named Graham Evans was taking photographs of Denby Castle when he suddenly saw a disc-shaped object moving rapidly from left to right in broad daylight, succeeding to capture the unidentified craft in his photographs. In 1964, a lady was walking her dog around the grounds of Denby Castle when she became aware that her dog was being encircled by a very strange light. This light made the dog become anxious and fearful, so the lady ran up to her dog to retrieve him. In doing so, she reached into the light, later experiencing minor burns to her hands and arms. The name Denby in Welsh, Dimbych, translates to Little Fortress, referencing the historic castle, which together with the town walls, was built in 1282 by order of King Edward I. The Burgess Gate, whose twin towers adorn the symbol on Denby's civic seal, was once the main entrance to the town. The lands were granted by Henry de Lacy, the Earl of Lincoln, who began to build a new old town, colonised by immigrants from England, protected by a substantial castle and surrounded by deer parks for hunting. The work had not been completed by 1294 when the Welsh temporarily seized the castle during the Madog ap Llewellyn revolt. The defences continued to be improved although the castle was not completed by the time of Henry's death in 1311. Denby has always been steeped in myths and legends, home to princes, earls, rebels and revolutionaries. 
So why not aliens? In the summer of 1974, two women leaving Denby Hospital claimed that they had witnessed a round, bright object in the sky, which rocketed away at high speed. Other similar reports were made in 1984 and in 1994, with a fast-moving orange light in the sky on the Denby Moors. In November 1997, a family driving at night in their car said that they lost hours from their memories after their vehicle was engulfed by a purple triangular craft. The male driver later had trouble with his teeth and when visiting his dentist, a small unidentified black object fell out of his mouth, despite him never having any fillings. The family were reportedly visited by Air Force personnel and told not to speak about the incident. In August 1998, a retired policeman was baffled by white lights he spotted in the sky. They appeared on the Friday night, and they made a repeat performance the next day, and again the following Monday. The retired policeman claimed that the sky was lit up for about 10 minutes. He said that he thought it was an alien spaceship coming down. It was the most peculiar phenomenon, which did not seem to be coming from the ground. In September 2009, a witness claimed to have seen an object in the sky, which at first he thought to be a normal aircraft, but it suddenly made a 45 degree change of direction and accelerated to a very high speed, shooting in the opposite direction to which it was originally travelling. The witness said that it appeared like a bright star, getting brighter and brighter as it sped away. The witness explained that he had served in the Royal Air Force and had experience in aviation, observation, recording and identification of aerial phenomena and he had never seen anything like this before in his life. The in-depth investigation by Gary Jones on the Denby Lights can be found in his book The Denby Lights, A Truthful Argument for the Existence of UFOs, available to buy on Amazon. One of the interesting sites that Gary investigates is that of Crestmara Woods, where Linda Pritchard, the mother of Nathan and Alex, said the UFO was hovering above. The woodland area mainly attracts dog walkers and hikers in this densely forested area and site of special scientific interest for its biodiversity and geological formations. Crestmar woodlands are adjacent to Denby Golf Course, and on investigation it was found that part of the ancient woodlands had been cut down and removed within a matter of weeks following the UFO sighting. So why would a protected site, an area of outstanding natural beauty, need to be fully felled in January, leaving large uprooted tree trunks and trees lying on the ground, slowly being reclaimed by nature, with no apparent indication that the trees had been infected with disease? Could this be another UFO cover-up like the Penturk incident? Could Denby really be a hotspot for alien and UFO activity? The truth is most certainly out there. So after this extraterrestrial episode, how many brooms do you give Denby? Well, I'm going to give Denby three and a half brooms. What did you like most about Denby? Well, I like the castle because I like history and the castle is haunted. But that's a story for another day. Well, that concludes our alien adventures in Denby. And we have an update on the Penturk incident coming very shortly. I hope you've all had a magical time.